Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast here on Blab. I'm your host, as always, Peter Ramoliotis, and on Twitter, I go as PD Beats. This is the podcast where we have topical discussions for the worlds of social media, sports, pop culture. <laughs> that was some Greek profanity, courtesy of Theo. Who in, the first time ever someone has interrupted the intro to Pop Alternative. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> so today we have a special music panel. I'm going to quickly introduce the panel quickly. We have guitarists uh, for the legendary Canadian punk band Gob Theo Gutsunakis. Tikanisre. I'm good. I'm very good. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> We have a uh, we have vocalist and guitarist for a Skylit Drive. We have Mikey Labelle. Mikey, welcome back to the show, man. Yo, give it up. Have me back. <laughs> and I saved the best for last, of course. But we have I don't know about that. <laughs> lead vocalist for uh, Protest the Hero, Rody Walker. Rody, thank you so much for coming up, on the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Everyone turn. Woo! I tried to Woo! clap, but I, I hold my phone with the one hand, so it was awkward, and it looked like I was being sassy going. <laughs> Theo, do you want to quickly introduce yourself to our viewers? Uh, in your, uh, I'm Theo from Gob. How the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, you want to give a little intro? Yeah, man. Uh, Michael Abel from Escala Drive. Proud to represent Canada. Well, everyone else here is Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. I forget about this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where do you think you are? Wait, you mean... <laughs> like, you oh. mean like represent Canada Vote. in a Scarlet Drive, right? Is that what oh, you meant? That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and Rody, what about you? My name's Rody. <laughs> That's uh, like I don't know. What have I got myself into today? Man? <laughs> <laughs> this is so not a usual episode of Bob. Trump. I should have had a beer. <laughs> I don't have one. I'm at, my mom's, I'm at my mom's place, so I don't have a beer here. Yeah, uh, maybe they'll find some ouzo. <laughs> <laughs> so, really quickly, just a specific, like a uh, first little topic to talk about. Uh, you know, a lot of you've, you know, well. Rody, you recently finished the 10 year anniversary because I had tour. Theo, God, you guys tour a lot. Mike, you tour a lot. What, on the top of your head, what are some of the changes, you know, with, you know, the advent of digital social media that come to mind, like touring now versus, you know, touring like five, five, 10 years ago? Theo, like on top of your head, anything comes to your mind in terms of that? Five, 10 years. Ago. Yeah, I mean, for sure, 10 years. Like, uh, I mean, I mean, even though the internet's been around since. For a while, but uh, it's yeah, man. It's I mean, everyone knows it's. I mean, pretty well being in a band. Social media is a huge thing. You know, it helps promote shows, helps everyone, and uh, yeah, and I guess it takes away a little bit of that uh, mystery with the band and the uh, you know, like when I was growing up with um, when I was a young little kid. <laughs> um, um, you know, you didn't really know as much. You just heard it through whatever magazines or through through the grapevine, <laughs> or, you know, or, or just from someone else just saying a rumor or something. Um, but now it's just like you know, people know in fi- like fifteen minutes or less. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, the instantaneous aspect too, Rody. Like everything's so quick, right? Oh yeah, a little too quick, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like when we were when we were kids, we used to like for our phones and stuff like that. We'd drive to the town where the show was, and we'd find a flyer for the show, and then we'd call from a phone booth and be like, "Hey, where is this place?" And that's how we would find our way to the venue. <laughs> you know? So I mean, it's a little different now. Yeah. What are those little bubbles that are like? I see bubbles like. So people are giving you props, so yeah. they like what you're saying. People oh. are really liking you. Oh, okay. I just yeah. Can you guys see the bubbles too? I see your guys' bubbles. Yeah, I see yeah. Your, your bubbles too. 
But yeah, Mikey, you know, you've been uh, in, in Sky, uh, Skylet Drive now for, I think it's it's going to be a year, right? It's or been a, a year, yeah. It's been yeah, a year? Exactly. We talked, year. To, we talked about it last time when we had you and Marissa on the show, but, you know, social media specifically is something that your band uses a lot. But I, I find Rody's, uh and Theo's comments interesting about finding out about shows because now, like, the inter- with the internet, you know, even ten, like five, five, ten years ago, there were still some ways of finding it, but now it's like you right. lineups get leaked all the time for many different things. It's a whole different ball game. Well, yeah, I mean, like to go back on what you said, you know, like I joined the band a year ago where social media was like a strong point in the industry, you know, so I haven't been to the point where the only thing you rely on is flyers and like, and like people just talking about your show, you know? Yeah, no, it makes sense for sure. Sorry, I'm just I still can't get over your representing Canada intro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that was perfect because I just looked at Rody's screen and Rody just had this most confused look. In his eyes. <laughs> no, but you know, Rody, Kazai, it's ten years old. Like that's pretty crazy. You guys made that record ten years ago. Yeah, I mean. No, no, just just thinking of it. it's just no, it's it's a record that's been that was put out ten years ago, and yeah. you know you're celebrating that and social like, you know it would maybe it wouldn't have gone as much buzz if it wasn't for social media and all these you know alternative press and all that that are writing, you know oh it's been ten years like all the coverage right it's all the coverage and the promotion like the free PR a lot of people call it right yeah I mean. It's funny, like, a lot of the kids that came out to the shows were like, holy, you know, I can't believe it's been 10 years. It doesn't seem like it's been 10 years. Uh, to me, it, it seems like it's been 10 years, you know? <laughs> like, it's like, that seems like forever ago. I can completely believe that it was 10 years. It's not, it's not crazy or anything like that. It's just time passes. <laughs> uh, do you, are you, are you one of those guys, too, that, you know, does it, like, like Theo, you can answer this question too. Does it amaze you that like almost everything you know related to like what you've done with the band over the past couple of years is on the internet still? Like old videos that you've put out, you know, like personal stuff or you know, like a band's warp tour video from like oh six. You know what I mean? It's just crazy how you could just search and check that out. It's gonna live there pretty much forever, right? Yeah, it's. Uh... Yeah, because sometimes you just want to. They go, "Oh my god, that's what I, you know, that's what I wore." <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we've been we doing the, uh, um, you know, videos now like twenty one years, I guess. So it's been you know, since their first record came out. So it's been a while. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine was the first record, right, Theo? No, no, it was ninety four. Was the first EP? Oh, ninety four. And then yeah, I was you know, born in ninety four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What was that? <laughs> But, but no, the first full length was 99, right? No, no. The first full length uh, was 95 at Too Late No Friends. But it was re-released on another label in 1999. Okay, okay. Yeah, 95. Yeah. That's crazy. And there hasn't been many... I've, have there been any lineup changes? Yeah, uh, well, the, the second drummer, like, we've had... Uh, Gabe's been in the band since 1998 since we did how far shallow takes you um and like we had yeah we had wolfman pat was the first drummer for the first few eps and the first full length and that um but yeah the bass players holy shit i think we've had eight or nine bass players um, i think he's online maybe he'll he'll tell me he, what yeah, number. Steve, he's on right now yeah he'll um, probably tell me Steven, tell us what number you are. You're eight or nine. Or <laughs> but all the previous of like just like Spinal Tap, they've all exploded until. <laughs> but you and Tom are our original members, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted. To, I've always wanted to ask you this because, of course, Gabe's Tom. Pretty much, Gabe's pretty much an original member too. Because I mean, he used to come out on tour when our drummer couldn't come out on tour because uh, of his whatever his work schedule that back in the day. So Gabe's been in the band, like he's pretty much, you know, I consider him an, an original member. Absolutely. But very, very quickly, uh, before I go to ask Rody and Mike question. Get um, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, make me come in there into your <laughs> interweb. <laughs> no, I just wanted to ask you, 
Um, I'm sure people ask you this a lot, but like Tom playing in some 41 for the past couple of years too. Does that, is that something, how does that, you know, affect or not affect Gob and their schedule? Like, do you, you mean, work like, around that schedule? Everything up? <laughs> no, if <laughs> it doesn't fuck everything up. I'm, uh, we were actually in between records and stuff when he was touring with them and starting, I think he started in uh, 2006. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there has been, uh, yeah, there's been stuff where it, like, you know, like when we we got shows offered the, uh, as they're on tour and stuff. So yeah, because he's he's also advertised as like in a, like yeah, they, a current member of Sum Forty One. It's not well, like he it's wasn't like he wasn't it for the first bit, but then I guess because what sometimes you know when you do certain shows uh, and certain tours, like you you're not the tour isn't as as good as you hoped it would. Everyone else got paid. The, maybe the band's not getting paid as much, mm -hmm. so he was getting paid as a like a like a player, like a just you know a, a, an amount. So I guess they figured to just to pay him as a regular member, like so that he'd get less. Well, I find it funny too because he's still like like uh, Brown sounds back in the band. You but guys know what I'm talking about. He, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> he's still better to in the hire band, a member though. than pay a musician to play for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, like Green Day, they had like one of their guitarists, like was in like playing with them for like many years, and they finally, like two, three years ago, said, "Okay, you can, we can announce you as like an actual member of the band." They had like another guitar player that was playing all the leads with Billy Joe, that like was just playing on stage, and they never like announced them as like an actual member of the band, and then finally they're like, "Okay." Well, now we'll we'll put you as a member. <laughs> so I that, well, yeah, I, it gets different when you start selling millions of records, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, it, oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Stephen there, uh, uh, <laughs> he sent me a, a thing about uh, Billy. It said it actually said it showed a picture of Billy Joe, but it in the, in the band Green Day, and it said Billy Joel quit mm. quit Green Day. And he sent me this thing, so of course I, I'm like, "Holy fuck, he quit! That's totally crazy." But as like my girlfriend pointed out, it, it, if you read on, it says, "You know, I never uh, in my 65 years on this earth that you know that you knew right away it was it, it was yeah. like, the right." I don't well, know. That's another. Know. That's another thing too. Clickbait, right? Clickbait is the worst. I remember, Rody. I've totally like before Arif left, like like left the band. There was like back in the day, an article that leaked that. I, I think that that Luke quit the band. I remember reading, and he didn't, no, really? and that was a lie. Yeah, no, totally. Luke yeah. Hoskin leaving. I, I, I remember, you remember that. I remember you remember oh, that? Yeah, sure. yeah, and yeah. It was, and it was we've totally... been clickbaiting since way back, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but it was like from another source, and people were like really believing it. No, that's amazing. Yeah, I wish it were true. Hey, he's a hell. <laughs> he's a good guitar player. Yeah, but he's a mean guy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember what time. Do you remember that, like that Jägermeister tour show you guys did a long time ago at Club I Soda? remember one too many Jägermeister shows. Was that a whole tour? Yes. So that you play that Club Soda show, and there was literally just a bunch of like French uh, Canadian metalcore band just opening up for you guys. And then what ended up happening is a week before that show, you know, back in the day, it was so cool to like be on MySpace and you know follow like have you know the certain members and message them be like hey i can't wait for the show you know next week in montreal and luke responded i'll never forget this he's like it's been canceled man and it wasn't <laughs> 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 so and then I, I totally saw him at the show and i was and he remembered me and he's like no i swear to god man it was originally canceled but then it wasn't canceled and he just like walked away I was like, he's mean spirited, Chris. man. I'm telling you. Yo, is Chris is Chris still your uh, your your merch guy? Chris Wine. Oh, uh, Chris Win. No, Chris I, Wynn, think yeah. I think he's actually watching though. Uh, oh, no, really? he he hasn't been our merch guy in years. He he does some kind of desk job that he hates, but tolerates for the money. Oh yeah, no, I I, I he also played in uh, Cheddar Cheese and the Mouse Trap. <laughs> That's right. He played in uh, my real my real band, Cheddar Cheese and the Mouse Trap. Who I was trying to book once through him, and it just never happened. I was trying to book you guys in Montreal with yeah. I remember with the organ themes. <laughs> so it's like yeah. a legit show. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 
But yeah, yeah, no, it was. I, I don't uh, know. You don't got the Skrilla to Ford cheddar cheese in the mouse traps. Man, we, that... we come with a high price tag. Was there actually beef between you guys and Stereos? Was that like a no. thing? That wasn't no. a thing, no. Well, you were on we the just... same record label, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, they like, they are they were terrible, and they knew it. No, but we, like we made fun of them in a song, and it, like there was no beef. Like we had no. Beer but, like were they were they mad about that? Like did you, did anyone ever like tweet? No, no. If you watch something? those videos, like not. The one from the one from Wakestock, actually. If you watch those, a couple guys of stereos are in the audience watching us <laughs> destroy their song. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I remember when I first booked shows because I used to be a cause promoter before I got into all the social media stuff, and that's how I know Mikey. I used to book a lot of Mikey's bands, um, mm-hmm. but uh, I I remember um, much music, like much disband. Do you remember that show? Yes, of course. All those bands. Like that, that's how I kind of got my start. I would book all the bads that lost that people were like, Hey, I remember you guys, you're mean tangerine. You were, you got, you were close to this band that you did it. That's so cool, man. And all these girls would like come up to them. I saw you on television. Mark Spicklick told you to quit and you did it. That's awesome. And it was like, <laughs> that's literally what, what happened. And I remember, um, uh, I worked with you know, Katie Clark a lot, and I know she managed you guys for a little bit, or had something to do with you guys. Yeah, right? she worked. She worked for our label, and she's a yeah. She's a and dear she was, friend. She was working. Yeah, no, Katie's awesome. Uh, she was working with uh, a band called Party Cat for a little bit too. I believe she still is. Oh, she still is. I'm not sure because she I, she was doing she was doing some other stuff too. I think with like Dead Mouse or um, yeah. I, I I think she's dating the guitarist in the band, and I think she's yeah she is she's also, dating Steve Sapp. She's dating Steve Sapp, but I don't think she's still like do like managing Particat anymore. I think she got okay. she has other stuff. But yeah, no, but like Theo, another thing too is like I remember you know being at a Greek Easter in Montreal in Montreal, Theo, and we were bored out of our minds, all the kids, and. We had much on, much um, much on demand on, and uh, I'm, I'm in I'm in like uh, the family room of where I am, and all I hear is for the first time ever, I, I the give up the grunge music video came on, and I was like, this band this band's pretty awesome, you know, and and it was like right like you know I knew some forty one at the time, so obviously you know a band like Gob, you know, um, you would say like had like a similar sound at times, you know, like the, the Canadian punk rock, right? But like that's my question for you. Talking about the, how the much music. Do you like what? What do you remember from specifically much music? And you know how <clears throat> was that like something that really you know because you also did like the there's a video of you guys playing Ming Tran at like the snow the snow tour or something like much music. I'm sure really elevated and and helped your band, right, Theo? Well, yeah. I mean, it was yeah that that at uh, that time much music was actually playing like like everyone's music and like real music in the sense of Mm -hmm. it wasn't just the top 40 or just whatever the paid spots of like reruns of the fresh prince (laughs) 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 yeah it was actually like i mean you would you would see other like it'd be rad like you'd see like you know like you know you'd see slash whatever walk in and talk and like whatever then they show like a hip-hop video or then you would see someone from a punk band and then it was always just like sort of, it was kind of unique and fresh because it was, you know, it was real. Um, and then now it's more just like how, you know, and, and I remember Americans seeing our much music and saying, I remember when our MTV used to be like, wait, it's not even like that anymore. It's like so homogenized and programmed and just all like, you know, it's, it's, and that's what it's now. It's more just like, it's, it's more like what's hot, you know, what's more hot and what who's who's trending and this and you know it's more like that it's just i mean as as us having a video first time on much music we did a minute and it was like a minute and 34 second video and uh we didn't even care about making like a fucking video because we just thought it was kind of like kind of lame but my cousin was just like yeah i'll make a little 16 mil video for you guys and we were just like this punk band just wanted to play shows and we were kind of content with the 30, 50 people. But I mean, obviously we, we if more and more people to come, sure. Cool. So we made that video and my uh, cousin and, and, and the person, uh, the label, sorry. Um, 
they uh, they submitted too much music and fuck, and it was soda and they kept playing it and uh, and then you know whatever. I remember just showing up. We showed up at the opera house. Uh, much what this is what much music did for us. Like we we never played uh, very big venues at the time before that whole much music thing. There's maybe 30, 40 people. That much music video when that took off, we showed up and there was like twelve over twelve hundred people at the opera house. So for us, we just didn't understand. Like it just wasn't. It didn't like who 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 are, who are they? So, like some you know bigger band playing or. But it was actually for us. So it was weird because we didn't even have like a light show. We didn't have any, you know, it was just fucking, you know, we just had our ripped jeans or whatever and they're just fucking our, our, our young, beautiful asses um, <laughs> shaking our booties on stage. And that, I mean, it was really weird for us to do, do go into that, right? But it was fun because it was, you know, there was more people and people were like, you know, more into it and they knew. You know, and they obviously knew more songs and stuff, and it was cool. And for sure, much music, um, sort of, it was like, you know, like that opened the doors for us. Like it was the biggest friggin', uh, like I guess, internet radio station, I guess, in the world at the time. That was like the the main thing to watch. Like when you go home, um, you know, you didn't go online or whatever back then. It was just like you watch TV or you you set the VCR to record shows and stuff like that because um, you would be stoked to see what was up and you knew that it would repeat every six or eight hours or whatever. So you would like wait to watch that same thing again, even though you maybe recorded it, it was like that exciting. Like, you know, I mean, that's what I remember, it, you know, it, uh, it was, that was, it was a big part of our life. And uh, I mean, it was cool. It was very cool at the time. I mean, it's totally different now. And we have been on there. I mean, in the past years few years ago i don't even remember when the last time when they had us but it, yeah it's totally mm -hmm. different like you know it's so it's it's totally different. yeah and Roberta, you you guys had a lot of success on you know m much music a lot what do you think it was i just like i've always wanted to ask you what do you think it was specifically like when fortress came out because one could argue when fortress came out that was you know um when it's when it all started for you guys, like a lot, like I, no, I mean, I think mean, Kazaya was uh, I calculated sound that like, people knew about them, but I think we, you can make an argument that your the, like your popularity maybe like, like peaked a little when Fortress came out, correct? <laughs> I mean, I guess so. What do you uh, think it was specifically about that? What was it with the timing? Was it with like I don't like I just find there was a situ there was a situation where you thought of you know. Um, metalcore or you know i don't know like emo screamer or all that you know protest hero was like the public eye you know what i mean in terms of that um I, I, it's really difficult to be objective in the scenario because it's like you're just spinning around as another fart in the shit storm right and uh it's just <laughs> like I, <laughs> okay i mean i don't know that fortress was our peak per se um you know i think uh the album that preceded that was probably our peak but uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's really difficult to say, like, what's going on because it's like all of a sudden <laughs> you're just oh, – I've really Sorry. lost my turn. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. I was waving. <laughs> yeah. I, but, you know, like, we released one album. We got some much music play, which was fantastic. Uh, we got bigger than we could have ever imagined. And then we released the next drought record. And at the time, Fortress wasn't very successful. People were like, oh, Kazai is better. The first record's better. And that's the same stuff everyone always gets, right? And uh, yeah. now well, you, you have to put out time. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean no, to. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> I was like, you, almost, you almost have like the longest time to make your first record till it comes out or. And then the the next record coming out, it's like it's actually like within a year. It's just like it, it, you mean oh, like yeah. building up to doing that. You might have like well, I remember. I mean, I don't know if I'm just speaking for our band, but I remember us having like like thirty or forty songs or something. And then like, we put out an EP, oh. and then we put nine songs, and then we had other songs too. So we put out a, some of those songs from that EP, but on to like, plus twenty songs. So we had a pile of songs like we, and then that was within a couple of years of getting the band together before that big record came out. But then the next one was just like, we don't have that many songs. And we put another EP and we just to sit. And then you're contemplating because now you have this, I guess, kind of, sorry, I'm not taking anything from you, Rodi. You're talking there, but uh, 
no, no. you have that you have that success or that thing with the first record so that kind of just sort of plants a seed and they're like thinking like fuck okay this has got to be just as good or better so mm -hmm. you got this weird pressure a little bit um and you're thinking about that and and you didn't want because you never had that before because you you made it honestly however it came out and that's right that's right I think it's, it, it's almost hard to like do that again because it was almost not not an accident but it's almost it's way more honest than could, it could ever be like it's it, it mm -hmm. once you start thinking about um oh shit i gotta make it as good as like but you know what mm -hmm. you fucking you, you oh, almost yeah. can't oh, yeah. you know maybe after you, after you i think after you receive yeah. any success whatsoever it becomes increasingly more difficult to be honest right to to get like that genuine artifact because you're not making it entirely for yourself anymore. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Well, yeah. uh, what I find interesting too is My Mikey joined, like a Skylar Drive's been a band for a long time. Mikey joined, you know, it's been a year. The 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 record that Mikey worked on, the self-titled record that, that was released on Tragic Hero Records, I remember talking to Mikey where, you know, the before he joined the band, they put out a record called Rise. This was a band that, um, for a lot of Skylet Drive fans, you know, it was hit or miss. Some people liked it, some people didn't like it, right? right, right. With this new record, I, like, Why, Wires Not So Breathing was, was a record that was very popular by the band. So Mikey's first, you know, um, experience with the band coming in, replacing when, when a lot of their members uh, left and got kicked out, was kind of to almost like revive it and make a record that sounded like the older records. Right, so right. I, I, so is that that makes sense or mike like that that's yeah kind of i mean i mean like when we were writing the record we wanted to like incorporate like every aspect of every album because like we kept having people on twitter and instagram and stuff like that you know saying um like make a record that sounds like wires or a record that sounds like rise or you know so we try to to write everything around everything that has been like released so far and uh you know we've just did everything that we could and we wrote a record and that was a self-titled you know we spent like i think we uh probably three four weeks in the studio just writing and recording and then like deleting a bunch of takes and then recording again you know so it's a bunch of like um recording and deleting and just you know trial and error yeah, were the, Rody, were there any songs like what, I found Theo? What you said interesting about like having like forty songs that ever happened with you, Rody? Like where you guys had too many songs? No, you had to, like, like, yeah, we we always wrote uh, ten songs for each record. We just we wrote ten <laughs> and then we <laughs> recorded them and then we put them out. I mean, it's how like did you maybe... guys choose names? Because obviously, in a band like you guys, naming a song, it's not like you know. Um, like a chorus, like the, what's it? The chorus, like I always wanted to ask you that. Like, how do names come come from it? Like, Eeny, like, meeny, miny, mo, catch a green. Like, for, like fortress, <laughs> right? You know, that's like, how we did it. Fortress had a theme, correct? There was a theme to fortress, right? Correct. What was the like? Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, not really. Like that's the funny thing because I, <laughs> Arf wrote all those lyrics. He named the <laughs> album. He named every song. I don't know a fucking thing about it, man. You just you just sang. I just sang. I was happy to do it. I'd be happy to go back and sing someone else's words because it's way less work for me. And I'm all about <laughs> just doing as little work as possible and dying miserable. Ar Arif, leave me. are you still are you still friends with Arif? Of course, of course. What happened? What happened there? He just wasn't. He just he quit. Wanted to you just want <laughs> no, to I move mean on, or? Yeah, I, I well, like he he plays uh, double bass or whatever it is. I mean, like he plays in country bands and stuff like that. And he he doesn't want to be playing heavy metal, and I I don't blame him because like I don't I don't have an intense love affair with heavy metal either. And like the more uh, that was the more... best answer to a question ever, by the way. What happened? He quit. He quit, and I want to quit too. <laughs> no, when, uh... when you say when you say heavy metal, do you mean like Motley Crue? No, I mean like. <laughs> <laughs> this this new this new like I just joke, but I really do hate Motley Crue. Just for the record, <laughs> I think they're the worst. <laughs> um, oh my god! 
Mikey doesn't and even know who Molly Crow is. They had the showman, they had the showmanship, man. They had the the rock outfits. They they were like the badasses, you know. Yeah, but that's all they were. Yeah, but they also <laughs> had, they also had that this record may contain backwards messages, and like that's all you needed to go like, oh, my parents are gonna hate this, so I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah, I, but I just like it does it did such bad things for heavy metal, man. Like just what about all Kiss? Of the, come on, Kiss, 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 Kiss was like a Motley Crew with make, Kiss was like a Motley Crew with makeup. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, yeah. Kiss is a really good, a, a really good pragmatic business band. I mean, at least yeah. Gene Simmons is. I don't know if they're a great band. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, I've, I've, I've had a couple of too I many think... beers. <laughs> I'm talking shit, and no, I he quit. He quit. I want to quit. He quit. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, tell me what you think of Nickelback. I love okay, it. I like Nickelback, <laughs> no, had, and I don't care. If, I, no, I've said fine. this before. I'm not saying it because he's had beers. I just want to know what I just oh. want to hear because instead of me <laughs> just putting my my foot in in my mouth all the time. Yeah, I mean, I just I, I don't I don't like Nickelback. You kind of you know you kind of just plugged in one of your albums, by the way, which I think is pretty funny. Foot him off disease, so. That was pretty clever of you. <laughs> I that wasn't in that wasn't. No, you did that on purpose. You did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, another I thing I wanted to talk about, which I think pretty cool, but Brody. I, I just, bury that say, bear, bear. Bear. just hold what? on. I just want to say just so this about the forty songs and all that. Yeah. yeah. Remember the yeah. reason why <laughs> we, wrote, we we wrote a whole bunch of songs and we had a, like a democratic process in the band where we chose the songs we liked. It didn't matter if it was Tom or me writing it. We kind of like yeah. wrote, and we just try to make um, a good record so that when li someone listened to the whole thing, because we wanted, because most people oh, I like a couple songs off it or three, but unless they're into the band and love that, then they listen to the whole thing. But you know how nowadays, but we try like to write, have more songs or like, you know, like a, a cornucopia basket of songs, you know, bring it in and just sort of like select the ones. Okay, this is the ones we want. So all those songs. That you've heard on all our records, we chose them, so it's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to wonder where you were going with all that. <laughs> no, because I wanted to say it earlier, but I didn't want to cut off Rody from talking. So, yeah. but I just wanted to cut. But, I just wanted to cut you off. No, no. <laughs> Thanks. Um, what I was going to say too is, Rody, I won't even be surprised if you don't even know this, but Bury the Hatchet was on Guitar Hero. Did yeah, no, that? I did know that. It was on okay. a DLC package, right? <laughs> yeah. And Theo, you guys had some songs in the NHL video games, which I think is one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, they had, yeah, we were. Like, in, uh, you had OLN and I Hear You Calling. We had Madden Football. We had Give Up the Grudges and Madden Football, too. Oh, okay. So that's my 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 question too. Everyone's like, oh, football, whatever, F hockey, but <laughs> hockey was the best one for sure. Yeah, we were in there for a few years. We had some songs. I actually got to go to EA and uh, mix a couple of the demo songs. Oh, for that's awesome! Yeah, that, that was pretty sick. Especially walking out of there with a stack twenty video games. Like, yeah. there you go. The I always I always find it cool. The reason I brought that up is because most of my music that I discovered was through video games. Like I'd play like Tony Hawk and I'd be like, yo, that song's awesome. And and you know yeah. like and and that 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 is a really cool way I find of discovering music, right? And with yeah. social media it's easier now, Rody, to like be like just in case it's not labeled anywhere, it's easy to be like Oh, cool. sweet! What's that song? And then you Google it. Oh, cool! It's Bury the Hatchet. You know what I mean? That's yeah. I find it's a it's a it's a unique, cool way. And Mike, you can agree, uh, chime in too. Isn't that like a cool way of, of finding music, like through video games? Like it's something you wouldn't think of. of yeah, course. I mean, I mean, like Guitar Hero and like Rock Band and stuff like that. You know, like there's a bunch of bands that I haven't even heard of, and I've <laughs> discovered through those video games. You know. Mm -hmm. And I remember Theo it was the coolest thing. It was the I was NHL 2002, I believe, with Mario Lemieux on the cover, and it was like I hear you calling or Oh Ellen was on it, and it yeah. was the song that was used like when you would start a game, there would be like a really cool video of like Mario Lemieux like going down and scoring like, the coolest <laughs> breakaway, and it looked so good. And then when you played the game, it did not look anything like that. <laughs> it looked like <laughs> the graphics weren't even as good, right? But like, that was they, that was as cool as we got. 
<laughs> but like I hear you calling was on that and that must be like no, no. that must have been I a really cool, cool. Oh, it must have been yeah, a cool dude. feeling to be like I like wrote it too wow it must be a pretty cool feeling for someone to be like screwing up like our song on Guitar Hero right now you know what I mean like <laughs> you know? no, it's, no it's cool I, I mean dude it, that, that stuff all is like super you know like it, you don't even think that some, like I mean uh, that that way it would happen or stuff like that. It's rad when they people come to you and ask your song to be in a movie or this and that. It, I think uh, it's I don't know. I feel humbled by it. I guess or something. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. It's like, it's it's awesome to have that. And, and anyone think, to, yeah. anyone to have if if people sing songs, know the lyrics to your songs, they show up at your fucking shows. It just seems that it's amazing to me that that's it's actually even after you know whatever so many years and stuff. Rody, back in the day, did anyone ever come up to you like while like you know when Fortress just came out or like because I came out and be like, hey, you know, Barrett Hatcher was on Guitar Hero. Did that ever happen? I, uh, you know, I I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that, but uh, we had a song on NHL 07, and we have a ton of people. You did the Dissentient, yeah. the Dissentients, yeah. yes. Yeah. Wow. Oh, if, that's so my bad as a podcast host, not the oh, research that no, because I could have totally said that both of you guys. It does matter. I blew it. But let me say, <laughs> NHL, like being on those hockey games is way better than being on Guitar Hero. I mean, <laughs> as a DLC for my, pack. my personal benefit, because it's like, I, I don't We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of hockey. Yeah. I want to play, well, I want to play hockey. <laughs> Funny thing. I hear, you. La- I hear you. I hear you on that. Last time we had Mikey on the show, we had him on with this girl named Marissa, who does social media for the Arizona Coyotes, which I think is pretty cool. But like he really like cool. had no idea what we were talking about because I forgot that Mikey's not really a hockey or sports fan. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. it was like, but it was interesting to have kind of like the because they're both it was both social media, so it was interesting to see kind of like the two sides of how people use it and like how yeah, like yeah. you could relate it, which was which was pretty cool. But um, yeah, my another thing I wanted to talk about too is you know you got the like, protest hero did a whole crowdfunding. Um, yeah. campaign for one of your records. Yeah, I told you yesterday that I was going to talk about that. You but, did um, tell me this. You <laughs> prefaced me. That's a, that's a that's um that's a love hate thing. Like some people are like 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 that like 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 crowdfunding, and there are some people that mm-hmm. don't like crowdfunding. Right? A lot of the, it's yeah. been associated with a lot of different things. It's been associated with you know bands being you know quote unquote lazy or you know um kind of taking advantage. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Because you guys went with it, you're gonna you 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 like you you were for it, right? But like, could you, do you see oh, yeah. where people come from when they were kind of against it? I mean, of course I do. Like, I I understand that perspective. People say, "Oh, you're begging for cash and stuff like that." And yeah, <laughs> I I guess you are, but I I honestly think that it's an honest exchange. Yeah, uh, and people it, it, not people realize that it actually doesn't cost like five dollars to record an album. No, it costs, absolutely, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, fuck, it's, dude, it's like the, yeah, I mean, and you can make cheaper records now, uh, you know, doing it, and, and that is, and, and my band, I do, I've been recording and mixing, like, doing it, so that kind of <laughs> sucks, but I have to do more work <laughs> now, fuck, yeah, um, no, but, um, but yeah, like, it's, it is, like, you're saying that crown, we never, I've never, we've never used the crown funding yet, but we have mm-hmm. talked about it, and we think it's a great thing, because, it's like it's also giving the people, I think, uh, a chance to be part of it, like making that record successful. Or it's like it's it's a kind of a, a unity, like everyone coming together to help out. We're at a stage now where I don't think you need labels, like at all. Like you can well, do no, yeah, yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, like at all. That's why I don't. I don't. That's think... the beauty of the digital era. That's the beauty of all the social media. Like when you're having a show, you just put it on Facebook. When you're releasing yeah. an album, is, you just put it out there. You don't it, need the labels to distribute all this information because all this information is out there. Yeah. yeah. But it is nice exactly. to have, like, if you have an independent label or someone that can do uh, the PR and a little bit of, of work of just setting up the record and stuff like that, because there is a lot of work involved. I mean, you can just get it out to your fans. And then, but I mean, it's, ideally, it is kind of cool still to have a little bit of that burden lifted off and have a, a team behind you and work with music i mean i still Ooh. like that i don't know if it's that's part of the old school of, of of me or whatever but i still like the team of people like when you roll up to the city of where that record you know and I, you know i mean 
even I mean, I, we were on Arista for 13 weeks. We had a record come out, and it sold like 40,000 in Canada, like 70,000 in Japan, 10,000 Australia, whatever. It sold all over, and we thought, holy shit! Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was cool. It's the only record in the world. But it, it, they said, well, you, you didn't sell enough. And bye bye. And then they just, they got, after 13 weeks, we got rid of us. Yeah. So they, they wanted, <laughs> they want you to sell like 500,000 to a million in like those first few weeks or something, you know. And that's the way it, it is. The, I mean, that's old school, maybe, but it was still nice to roll up and have a team uh, company that. Kind of represented you and and also took care of you with setting everything up in yeah. the sense of distributing it and all that. And I know you can do it digitally yeah. and off a server and all this and that. But so I mean, Mikey, which is cool. Yeah, Mikey and I have we have friends in a band called Vesuvius that just recently got signed to a, a label called Tragic Hero Records. Um, and what I find about that too is, Mikey, you think that those are that's a small label, right? There's it's small, and. The fact of the matter is, the like it, the dep like depending like what you know they're they're offering, you know Vesuvius or like a Skylar Drive or other bands, it, it's it and like if they're taking like a big cut of percentages or something, there might be a situation where you can go to like a, maybe a smaller label and you know negotiate something else and like Rody says, use the power of the internet and boom, get your record out there, right? Right. Like right. it doesn't have to be a whole big like all these like bands going Rody to like Rise Records and hopeless and fearless and all that i think that's kind of abolished in this day and age you don't need that you know what i mean like it's yeah you definitely don't i mean you, you could you could you could do it all on your own you know but just the extra push i mean you're you're already writing the songs you're already recording the songs and you're like putting so much like time into like you know the songwriting and everything making sure that the song is perfect and you want it to be like distributed worldwide as much as you can, you know? So, I mean, that's where the labels come in play and whether, you know, it could be a small label or, or a uh, medium size or like a, like a, like Warner brothers or, you know, like one of the bigger labels, you know, uh, like they're, they're obviously going to try and push your product, right? Cause they, they invested time and money into your band. So they're going to try and uh, push your product. So, I mean, um, you know, whether it being a small, smaller label or uh, a higher label or you being on yourself, you know, you're always going to try to find the extra help into yeah. pushing your product. And also, too, like yeah. to, to uh, talk a, a little bit about what Michelle will say, I, I go on top. It was uh, like, I don't know if you guys, and I'm sure you did this, like if, a, a, you know, if uh, a record came out uh, and then a band you like, uh, SST Records or Fat Records or whatever, you would or epitaph like you would kind of check out what other bands were on those labels right oh for sure yeah, oh, yeah so sure. that was the kind of i mean i know i'm throwing it back to that, to that old school thing of when we're talking about the label but that was the kind of cool thing when you had a label that sort of had the same genre or like something similar to like sort of like a gang or whatever you had a, a you know you're associated with and um and that was the kind of that's cool if you had a cool label that you're. Yeah, on. that was amazing about labels like Fat Records and like, Epitaph like, changed my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe the person like, I yeah, had those punker Amacombs. Just like me, network network <laughs> records like Sarah McLaughlin like totally changed my life. Rory, remember that interview <laughs> that George Shravalopoulos did with that, you that, when you like. Old? <laughs> There was like there was an interview where like you like were skipping school and like you just started in the band. Yeah, was, well, I, I, I don't know if it started in the band, but it was my 18th birthday. I was skipping school. Of course, I was skipping school, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What was that? How? Like, because you, you, yeah, you were 18, right? That was that was was it when the Cactus Sound came out? I don't know when it was. It was like 2003 or four or something. That was uh, that, that's isn't it pretty funny looking back? That's though, awful. Like, he interviewed you I mean, like I that. Mean, I see that, like I see that <laughs> pop up. Someone posts on my Facebook. It's like, oh, why am I gonna want to watch this? Like, it's embarrassing. It's hey, embarrassing. I, I, I bet you'd rather you you'd rather watch that than the the, the great much music video uh, interview yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah, Matt Babble. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> 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 yeah, Theo's eyes just popped up. Like, what? I want to know about this. <laughs> What no, happened? We actually, 
we have a Rody, we have a we have a question. Someone asked, somebody has a question for you yep. actually. Two. So so it says it says Rody, do you think the Pacific Myth subscription series is succeeding like you had hoped? Is it selling more than you think of the traditional release for people to buy? Because when it first came out, I thought it was a genius idea. So I'm wondering if it was a genius, if it was a genius as it sounded, LOL. I don't know if it's genius. It, it suffers from the same pitfalls as that uh, title music service, is that it's like a subscription-based thing that is so specific that you're not going to reach a wider audience, right? You're going to only reach your audience. So it has been very successful um, in that, you know, like it, we've we put out an EP and a lot of people have enjoyed it, but uh, it, it has not done anything in the way of growing our band, which uh, you always want to do with new music. But, um, you know, this is kind of just an interim EP and it's it's been a really fun experiment. It's not something that I don't it's not something that I think we would ever do again. I hope that no, uh, makes sense to someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you just finished Kazaya uh, anniversary tour. You guys are recording a couple of, like, some stuff now. What, what's the what, what's like what's what's happening with Pro Desi Hero for the spring and, and the summer like that you know of? Because I'm sure a lot of things happen out of the. Um, pool, right? We're doing some festivals in the UK, uh, a tour with between the oh. Buried and Me in Europe, and we're doing an Asia tour, with Japan. Uh, Singapore and China and stuff, and uh, I'm, I'm getting married in June. And uh, oh, oh, congratulations! Thank you. Congrats, thank you. congrats man. No, seriously, congrats. And then, awesome. uh, and then I'm not gonna. I'm gonna quit the band, and I'm gonna just uh, do nothing for the rest of my life. Live off Joe Fresh money. <laughs> You know, you say you say that like I'm gonna quit the bad, but like I I feel like like is that is that something you're like are you just joking or is that something that might happen? I don't know. <laughs> no, oh, I think like, the, the <laughs> truth is I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna ride this wave of mediocrity well into my old age, and uh, I'm gonna joke about quitting it the entire time. <laughs> Theo, I was uh, Stephen was telling me that because. Um, I'm in Ottawa now, and I I did some social media work for Chris and Mavericks um, as well. And uh, you, you played there a couple of times. Uh, are you guys gonna be touring soon, or yeah. is there is that in the works? Yeah, we're uh, we're actually doing. Um, let's see, I think the only four shows this year uh, we have planned. Hopefully, we'll be writing a record. Uh, but um, yeah, we're doing three shows with the Offspring. Like the it's um, oh. Yeah, we're doing that's awesome. March twenty third, twenty fourth, and twenty fifth, which is Saskatoon, Edmonton, and Calgary. So I think one of the shows is sold. Calgary shows sold out, um, not because of us though, but. Are you the? Are you like is it just you and Offspring? In case they wanted, they, they, someone from Calgary. They want. They want. Is it you and Offspring, or is there other bands? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, a, is there's it a, another like, band playing too. I think it's uh, well, actually, some of the shows. I think we're it's just us and Offspring, and then there's I think one or the two of the shows. Uh, there's a band called uh, Pigeon Park from Vancouver. I don't really know them, but I don't know what okay. I don't know the band. I don't know. I don't even know. That's, that's really that's really cool though. I that's think like that's awesome. Movie. But any any chance of any chance of doing like an Ontario Quebec tour again? Like like. Coming to Matt because I want to. Um, I want to party with you next time you're in Matt. We're doing Medicine Hat. That's close. Yeah. Totally not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, do, we're, doing, <laughs> we're doing Medicine Hat on the 21st, like a war, like a little warm up show, and then, uh, uh, and then, yeah. So it's just those four shows. <laughs> but Toronto and Quebec or Ontario, Quebec. I mean, um, maybe you never know. It could we could, happen. yeah, it could have. We could get like a call. Um, they asked us to go to come to the for the warp tour last summer, but we and Tom was like on his honeymoon uh, in Paris or going through Paris at that time, so we couldn't do that uh, Toronto oh, warp tour thing they asked us to do. So, mm. I mean, we played the warp tour in like 99, 2000, 2001, 2002. We played it for many years back then, but it's like so fucking different when I see the lineup of the bands, yeah, 
Yeah, no, it's, 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 they have bands that like protest the hero play now. <laughs> no. no, they don't have us. I know, I know that. I mean, I, <laughs> do you know all the bands that you, when you look at the Warped Tour, like, honestly, would you be li list, read all the bands and tell me that you know, like, mo like at least half of them? Not even, no. Well, my, Mikey probably knows yeah, most of them. Yeah, yeah, Mikey, yeah, I, I yeah, would know. Yeah, Mikey plays in a band of that genre of music. But, Rory, I remember seeing you guys at Warp Tour like two or three times. At one time, they had you guys play on the Ernie Ball stage. Yeah, we, pl we played and a whole summer was... on the Ernie Ball stage, man. And my question for you is why? <laughs> why did you play on that stage? Like, I remember it being... One time I played like, on my own that, ball. That, <laughs> That, that, the one time we played on the steel ball stage and it was fantastic. <laughs> and they were so big and red. <laughs> no, but, no, but um, that's a smaller stage yeah. and they had you play that? No, no, no. And that's almost like Theo. Where did you hear that? No, where did you hear that? No, man. The Theo ball stage is fucking huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... but you know, some forty one played War Tour one year when Tom uh, Tom was on in the band as well, and they played Glamour Kill stage. It was a terrible idea because that was a small stage. And Brody, I swear I'll try, to God, I'll try and was, I'll try and correct that for the next time. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's it, it's the, kind of sometimes what, they put yeah you know what I yeah you. they just put they, they put I'll different put it, band in perspective like. Sometimes they do a fucking. I, I someone gets a case of the fuck arounds and just fucking does whatever. Because when we played on the Warp Tour, they put us on last in Calgary, uh, right? Bef like we played after we had to play after Green Day, and we were like, wh "What the fuck? Why would you do what? that to us?" Like you know. And then we even in Toronto, they put us on after No Effects. And I mean, at the time, it was lucky that like people still knew who we were and, and are out. You know, like p people. People stayed and watched it, and it was like a lot of people still know and laughed and all that. But well, it was it's rough fuck. Now. it's fuck. You it's fuck. It's like they just kind of do. Okay, we're gonna throw you in the fire here and do this. And you're gonna put you on yeah. this stage. It's like you never know. You you're on the main stage, then on your next thing you know, it you're playing on my balls stage. Yeah, but you played. Have you God has God played Rockfest? Uh, in Montebello. Yes. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we played. Rody, have played you guys twice. played? We played twice. Rockfest. Isn't that I heard? I've never been, but I heard it's just like it's crazy. Like it's like really it's, all over the place. Well, and the thing is, I'll tell you, what, like the last, like we weren't on the last year, but the year before, there's like two days, and there's like a hundred, like honestly, ninety to a hundred bands, and you cannot yeah. see all of them. And that's the only thing I would say. But it's like how do how do you even manage that though? Like I just think of like because. Silverstein, uh, I saw them uh, in Ottawa Friday. They told me that they're playing rock fest. Right. It's too many bands. It's like I don't know. Like I know people only have like fifteen minutes of attention span these days, but <laughs> it's like it's too many. But it's also bands. It's, it's too like it's too packed though. Like how, like you get in there, you're not gonna get out there for a couple of well, it sells of hours. It, yeah, no, it sells tickets, right? Like it sells tickets. It's uh. At, when did you guys play, Rody? When was the last time no, you no, played no, Rody, Go back to that plaque on the wall there. Was that was that the protest the hero one? Yeah, that's oh, that's fortress. This oh, is my kind of shrine to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to my basement. It's just all bullshit. Uh, no, but you. When did you guys play Rockfest? Uh, we played the year that No Use for a Name played uh, Bad Religion as I lay dying. But and that, that was 2012. I was there. Yeah, it was a good yeah. time. I mean, I got to see that No Use show. Uh, I watched uh, Bad Religion. That's all I really remember. I mean, I hung yeah. out with guys from SLA dying a bit. But... Yeah, I remember you guys. Mikey, you, you guys played the smaller stage. I think the uh, I forget the name of it, but it was uh, was the it called Theo's Balls? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the stage. That's it, that's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just measuring for curtains. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, like, when you guys can keep talking, I'm going to close it up in a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was really, I was really wondering what he was doing with the measuring. No, we actually we have confirmation down here in the comments. Uh, 
that Theo's balls are quite large. <laughs> and red. <laughs> and red. No, this the 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 who, people who should be watching the alternative. Are, 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 this is so not like Mikey. You've been on the show before. This is so not like usual episodes. No. Like people are going to check it out and be like, oh, "What is?" Oh, that's good. oh, good. Then someone's going to watch it then. <laughs> no, <but> I, mean, <laughs> uh, I was. Asko, Theo, okay, Asko. So. Okay. Hey, Theo. Hey, uh, uh, how, how do I? How do I make my um? How do I make people like me more? Well, I'll like you. Um. Oh, there you go. Okay. I'll give you some likes. Here. I just. I mean. I mean. I know that it's mine's not. I mean, like Peter's is only seventy three right now, and mine's holy shit, it's going up. I just. And yeah, we'll get you going that's here. All you have you. to say. Uh, I thought uh, you were like just in general, shit, like Peter. That, how do you make you people like your own buttons? Is that what? How do you guys get them yeah. so high? <laughs> you like yourself. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, I was hit. I was hitting your guys' buttons. Can you see? Oh my god! I'm hitting them. I'm hitting them. And now we're hitting you, bro. Oh look at that! <laughs> oh, fuck oh look at that! So, so Rody, my Tom my Tom name's Petey Beats. Actually, Rody, I forgot to tell you this, but um, Petey Beats. Uh, we uh, yeah, that was my DJ name in CJ, mm-hmm. and I had a metal radio show. And Bone Marrow, the beginning was like my intro to my show. Pretty cool. That's very interesting. It was like like ten seconds of bone marrow in the beginning. That really cool, like, mm-hmm. um, cool vibey with like that good, the girl kind of like singing and a little two, bit. The two so, like, throat singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, it, was, dude, it made for a cool intro though. Like that in the background, it's like now it's time for my show. Was, it was like a metal music show, so it was called the Mosh Block. So it was like now the Mosh Block with Petey Beats. I was Beaver Fest for you guys. You remember that? That's right. I remember we ran into you in the in the mini or in the vehicle there, right? We were yeah contemplating. You guys were going to the airport, or were yeah. No, I remember that. I was actually going to talk about it earlier, and then um, yeah, my track. microphone wasn't working, and, uh, and 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 it was because you know you know right, 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 right. <laughs> no, it's. <good. laughs> I'm just joking, Nick. But anyway, um, the Beaver Fest was. Um, Apparently, uh, it was. I mean, to me, it was like a travesty yeah. in the sense of like, the amount of people. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but apparently, when the guy said, "No, no, you guys had a great crowd," I'm like, "Really? That was a good crowd?" Like he compared it to. Could... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like compared to the other bands. Like, the other bands only had like seven or eight people watching them, and I'm like, "Oh, oh. <laughs> so I mean, okay." And and here I thought having musicians on the show was a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Great idea. But seriously, guys, thank you guys for, for coming on the show. Thanks for everyone to that, that listened in. Um, thanks, everybody. You could uh, – thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> anything specifically – any closing, closing remarks, Mikey? And Anything specifically you want to say? Sorry, Mikey, man. Anything it, it, specifically? It, it lagged out a little bit. Um, anything you want to say, closing remarks? What are you going to say, Mike? Uh, all I have to say is – Representing Canada, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rody, Rody, Theo, thank you guys so much for coming. I, I don't get I to really say appreciate anything. It. Yeah. Yeah, Theo, those are uh, us. Yeah. I want Donald Trump to change his name back to Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> you, know talking, no, you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And, and I got hats coming. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, this has been Pop Turnative. Thank you all. The, you could uh, watch previous episodes of Pop Turnative on our YouTube page, and you can follow us on Twitter, Pop Turnative, and like us on Facebook. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. <laughs>